I will also remind you that in 2004, in the Republican primary in Pennsylvania, a fellow by the name of Pat Toomey, a congressman, decided to take on Arlen Specter, a left-wing Republican. Specter had been there a long time, and Toomey had a very good shot at beating him. But it was Rove who sent Bush into Pennsylvania to campaign for and endorse Arlen Specter in 2004. Absolutely awful judgment. Awful judgment. So it's a very weak record. It's a very bad record. Despite all the money raised, beside, beside all the spin, all the propaganda, all the whiteboards, and there he was on election night on Fox. When the Fox analysts, who are superb, concluded that, well, unfortunately Obama won Ohio. He had a tantrum on television, disagreeing with them. This county isn't in, this town's not in, my sources tell me, which is kind of what he does. And yet we lost Ohio. This fellow Stephen Law was going to head the conservative victory fund. You know, like the leftists, they name something which is actually the opposite of what it is. It's the defeat conservative victory fund. Well, he has a record, too. You see, he was the executive director of the National Republican Senatorial Committee. And the job of the executive director of that committee is to win Senate seats for Republicans. And 1998 was supposed to be a pretty good year, given the fact that, well, Bill Clinton was mired in a scandal, you may recall. And under Stephen Law, Rove's right-hand man, who's going who's gonna to make sure we nominate the right people in the Republican primaries... There were no Republican seats gained in the Senate. Zero. Despite all the effort, all the money, nothing. But Stephen Law was still there in 2000, the executive director, the head staff guy of this committee. And what happened in 2000? Well, Bush barely won. And under Stephen Law, we lost four seats in the Senate. We lost four seats. So his record for two election cycles in the Senate is a negative four. And now he is going to tell us which candidates can and cannot win in Iowa and Georgia, four or five other states, as they get involved in the primaries. Because, you know, we conservatives and Tea Party folks, we've nominated so many lousy candidates. But today really topped it off. Because Rove really exposed himself for the hack, the vicious hack that he is. On national radio, on my buddy Sean uh, Sean Hannity's radio show. First, he started to flail and attack conservative groups that have been around a long time, that have worked very, very hard as just inside the Beltway consultants who are trying to enrich themselves. So here we have a guy who's become a millionaire off of this American crossroads and other scams that he's running, in my humble opinion. Part of the consultant parasite class who has a horrific victory record attacking all these other folks. Of course, not by name, but just generally, because that's what he does. But that didn't even bother me that much. The way he is now trying to destroy Steve King, a member of Congress from Iowa, a conservative who's conservative across the board on economic matters, on national security matters, and yes, on social issues, is just disgusting. It's the sort of thing Rove did after... uh, O'Donnell was nominated in Delaware, goes on Fox and just starts trashing her and sends out emails and is planning stories just to string her because it wasn't the candidate he wanted, the candidate he backed lost, so he was going to prove you don't mess with Karl Rove. Eviscerated her. Weak candidate or not, she's lost one race. Karl Rove has lost scores of races. But it's what he said about Steve King today, and it was a flat out lie. Carl Rove said on Sean Hannity's radio show, now look, I must admit my personal view is about Steve King. He's not a particularly strong candidate. He ran behind Mitt Romney in the most Republican district in Iowa. That just is unimaginable for a sitting congressman who's supposedly been able to build a lot of bridges across the line. I'll take you back again to 1980, when his candidate, George H.W. Bush, lifelong resident and citizen of Texas, former congressman of Texas, was beaten by Ronald Reagan in 1980 in the presidential primary there. And yet he stuck with Bush to the end. He said, and I do, I personally do think he's got some problems. And by the way, he doesn't say that Steve King was running against an extremely difficult candidate. The wife of the former governor, who's now the current agriculture secretary, 
and they poured in a ton of money, and the unions came into that district. He was one of the targeted races, and he won. And he won. Well, he was trailing Romney. He was targeted, and he won. So now you see, Rove sets a different standard. Well, he won, but he should have won bigger. And so they trash him, just as his, his loser friend, Stephen Law, trashed Steve King in the New York slimes of all places. They plant their story there because they hope they can raise money all around Manhattan and so forth with a number of big, moderate to liberal corporatists and other funders who will continue to pour money into the Rove machine. But here's what was stunning. Rove said this, and I quote, Yesterday, he, meaning Steve King, said he would not disavow Todd Akin's comment that a woman's body has the ability to distinguish between a legitimate and an illegitimate rape, whatever that means. Steve King said that yesterday, yesterday, said Rove. Steve King did not say that, Mr. Rove. I have the actual comment that Steve King made. It's in the Hill newspaper. You could have read it, Mr. Rove. It's right there for most literate people to read. And in relevant part, the Hill newspaper says, Representative Steve King said Wednesday he considers former Representative Todd Aiken a friend and told a radio interviewer he would not disavow the former GOP Senate candidate over his controversial comments. King, who's considering a run in Iowa, a Senate run, neither embraced nor disagreed with Aiken's comments. Well, here's exactly what he said. Well, I had never heard of that theory before it was uttered in Missouri. I've not seen anything come out since that, so I know nothing about that theory. What I have said is that I've served here in Congress with Todd Aiken, he was a friend going in. He'll be a friend coming out. But what happened in Missouri isn't relevant to what goes on here in Iowa. Mr. Producer, does that sound to you like Steve King endorsed what Todd Aiken said? Not a word of that in here. Not a word of it. And yet Carl Rove goes on the second biggest national radio show in America and lies about what Steve King said, continuing his campaign to smear this man. Because he dares to consider to run in the Republican primary for the Senate in Iowa. You listening to me, Iowa? Because Karl Rove supports a moderate Republican backed by Boehner and backed by Mitch McConnell. And we can't have that now, can we, ladies and gentlemen? So he's out there to destroy Steve King, who's been a member of Congress for 12 years, who won a difficult re-election in, in, uh, in, uh, in Iowa, well, the left lined up against him, the unions lined up against him, and he pulled it off. And now he's up against Karl Rove, who's kneecapping him. Pretty disgusting, don't you think, ladies and gentlemen? And he flat out lied about what Steve King said on that backbencher radio show. The evidence doesn't lie, Carl. I've got it right here in front of me. Uh, I don't know if you were director of something or executive director of something in 1980. You don't know what you were. You've said two different things. I do know this. Every opportunity you had to back Ronald Reagan in a Republican primary, you didn't. Gerald Ford and George H.W. Bush. And you sent George W. Bush to back Specter against Toomey. And these are the guys that are the smart guys who are going to decide who the Republican nominees are in these different states. They're shaking down millionaires and billionaires trying to create a centralized system that they'll run out of their lavish offices in Washington, D.C. Is that what we want? Is that what we want, America? Is that how we, we reverse course? George Bush, George W. Bush, supported TARP, $700 billion. Billions in subsidies to General Motors and Chrysler, which came out of TARP which in my view was unconstitutional and violated separation of power since Congress refused to subsidize GM and Chrysler. That's right. Massively expanded Medicare. Massively expanded the role of the federal government in public education. George Bush, while campaigning against McCain-Feingold, ultimately signed it into law. Had to be reversed by the Supreme Court. George Bush, comprehensive immigration reform. See, the Tea Party came to be Tens of millions of Americans who were never involved in politics before finally rising up said, we have had enough. We've had enough of big government Republicans. We've had enough of leftist Democrats. We've had enough of Bush. We've had enough of Obama. We've had enough of deficits and debt, expanding federal programs. Somebody has to do something. So the American people rose up and did it themselves in 2010. They said enough. 
And you voted in historic numbers up and down the ticket. Local, state, federal races. 700 Republican victories like never before. More state legislatures than any time in modern history. More governors than any time in modern history. You delivered the Republicans the, un the uh, House of Representatives. You almost took the Senate. And what do they do? They give us Mitt Romney. Well, we didn't give it. You know, you ran in the primaries and you lost. Well, we know who backed what. The only guy who can win. The only guy who can win lost. Lost. Against a man in the White House who has a disastrous record. Domestic and foreign. Disastrous. What went wrong? What went wrong? I'll tell you what went wrong. There wasn't a conservative on the ticket. That's what went wrong. That's what went wrong. And these people go on TV and they pose as conservatives. They undermine the whole notion of conservatism. They're big government Republicans. They feed off the public trough. They shake down these, these donors who are not paying attention to what's going on. And then when they're losers, as Rove and company were big time in the last election cycle, they blame the Tea Party. They talk about two races. Not Hawaii, not North Dakota, not Montana, not Connecticut, not Florida, not on and on and on. No, two races. Is open and window to what's going on so you can look in yourselves. These people are playing with your lives. They're playing with your money. They're playing with the future of your children. I am tired of a Republican Party that plays along. I am tired of a Republican Party that mouths the platitudes with the same faces and the same, uh, the same whiteboards, the same spin. And then come election time, they don't perform because it is they who promote loser candidates. It is they who campaign on mush. And you see, the truth is this. They're not conservatives. Their entire career is demonstrated. The greatest president in modern American history is Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan had to fight these people. Ronald Reagan fought Gerald Ford in the establishment, and Karl Rove was part of the Gerald Ford effort. Ronald Reagan fought the Bush family, George H.W. Bush, and by the way, enormously decent human being, but that's not what I'm talking about, the politics of it. And on the other side was Karl Rove, and he must be embarrassed by it, because he doesn't really tell the truth about it. He doesn't go on O'Reilly's show and say, look, I backed Ford in 1976, and yes, I backed George H.W. Bush in the primary against Reagan, and yes, it wasn't until after the Detroit convention when Reagan was nominated and he chose Bush, and my boss, the governor of Texas, told me, I'm setting up this group, you run it. Yes, it wasn't until then that I backed the, the Reagan-Bush campaign for four and a half months. He's embarrassed. He must be embarrassed by his own career and his own record. Because he doesn't fess up. We've got to go down and dig it all up. We've got to talk to people who used to work with him in Texas. People who used to oppose him in Texas. We have to go to the writings of, of uh, Rove himself. The writings uh, of, of uh, Lynn Knopfsinger, Tom Parkin, other people. Because Rove doesn't want to reveal. Doesn't want to reveal who he is. Well, now he's revealed. No, he's not the conservative standard bearer. No, he's not fighting on behalf of conservative principles. He didn't do it prior to ascending to the uh, White House with George W. Bush, and he didn't do it when he was sitting next to George W. Bush. That's the bottom line.